going back with the chapter 9 of the first king. This is what it says. It says, The Lord appears to Solomon. As soon as Solomon had finished building the house of the Lord and the king's house and all that Solomon desired to build, the Lord appeared to Solomon a second time as he had appeared to him in Gibeon. The Lord said to him, I have heard your prayer and your plea which you have, which you have made before me. I have, I have consecrated this house that you have built by putting my name there forever. My eyes and my heart will be there for all time. And as for you, if you will walk before me as David your father walked, with integrity of heart and of righteousness, doing according to all that I have commanded you, that can keep my statutes and my rules, and I will establish your royal throne over Israel forever. As I promised David your father, saying, You shall not like a man on the throne of Israel, but if you turn aside from following me, you or your children, and do not keep my commandments and my statutes that I, may, that I have set before you, but go and serve... other gods, or really demons is what they are, and worship them, then I will cut off Israel from the land that I have given them, and the, and the house that I have consecrated for my name, I will cast out of my sight, and Israel will become a proverb and, and a byword among all people, and this house will become a heap of ruins. Everyone passing by it will, will be astonished, and will hiss, and they will say, Why has the Lord done thus to this land and to this house? Then they will say, Because they abandoned the Lord their God, Jesus Christ, who brought their fathers out of the land of Egypt and laid hold on other gods or demons and worshipped them and served them. Therefore, the Lord has brought all this disaster on them. Basically, what I'm saying is, if you say you're a Christian, if you say you're a follower of God, but yet you turn from God and you start living a, a, a hellish, you know, rebellious type of life, God said He will send judgment upon you, and He will. Place promise in Israel here, and of course, he all talks about that. Or, of course, you see, all, you see that throughout the Bible that people that turn from God end up God's, God's wrath is being poured upon them because God, God doesn't put people who, of course, who, of course, will, will turn away from Him and, and turn and, uh, and, and will turn to a uh, rebellious, simple life, but God does not put up with that, and He will, and He will allow evil and condemnation and judgment to come upon that person. If they don't repent their sins, come to him for salvation. Um, Solomon's other acts. At the end of twenty years in which Solomon had built the two houses, so it took it took uh, Sol Solomon twenty years to build uh, the temple and his and his own house or, or his palace, the house of the Lord and the king's house. And Hiram, king of Tyre or Lebanon, had supplied Solomon with cedar and cypress timber and gold as much as he desired. King Solomon gave to Hiram twenty cities in the land of Galilee. So, so um, in response to Lebanon helping Israel build the temple and the palace, Israel turned on and gave Lebanon 20 cities out of Israel. So, it says, um, But when Hiram came from Tyre to see the cities that Solomon had given him, they did not please him. Therefore he said, What kind of cities are these ye have given me, my brother? So they are called the land of Cable to this day. Hiram has sent to the king 120 talents of gold. And this is the account of the forced labor that King Solomon drafted to build the house of the Lord in his own house, in the middle of the wall of Jerusalem, in Hazer, in Megiddo, and in Gezer. Pharaoh, king of Egypt, had gone up and captured Gezer, and burned it with fire, and had killed the Canaanites who lived in the city, and had given it to, and, and, uh, and had given it as, as dowry to his daughter, Solomon's wife, to summon rebuilt Gezer. So since Pharaoh, the king of Egypt at the time, so since he went into Canaan and defeated the Canaanites, um, in response to that, Pharaoh turned around and gave, um, and the seeds that he that he captured, he he he, uh, he turned around and gave gave the seeds he's brought back to uh, brought back to, to Solomon. So he kind of made a peace, like you know, like you read here in the, in the chapters before this chapter, um, Solomon actually made peace with the Pharaoh of Egypt because, of course, Solomon was married to his daughter, so. So, they made, so of course Israel and Egypt made peace, and um, and you know of course later on, or yeah before that uh, of course Pharaoh had had captured cities and all that in the land of Canaan, and then the cities that he had captured he, he gave right back to uh to King Solomon to Israel, the ones he had captured. It's kind of like a peace initiative, kind of like a trade back. Um, anyway it says um. And of course, those that 
that uh, the seeds that Pharaoh had captured and, and, and given back to uh, Israel. Israel had to rebuild those cities. And lower Bethron and Baloth and Tamar in the wilderness in the land of Judah. And all the store cities that Solomon had and the cities for his chariots and the cities for his horsemen. And whatever Solomon desired to build in Jerusalem and Lebanon and all the land of his dominion. All the people who were left in the, of the Amorites, the Hittites, the Pezzarites, the Hevites, and the Jezubites, who were not of the who were not the people of Israel, their descendants who were left after them in the land, whom the people of Israel were unable to devote to destruction. These all men dropped to be slaves, and so they and so they are to this day. So, what happened, what happened to the Canaanites? After Israel had defeated them, the, the Canaanites that, that were that were left, left over who survived, Israel made them their slaves, pretty much. Um, it says, uh, but the people of Israel saw them and made no slaves. They were the soldiers that they were his uh, officials, his, his commanders, his captains, his chariot commanders, and his horsemen. These were the chief officers who were over Solomon's work, 550 who had charged the people who carried on, who carried on the work. The Pharaoh's daughter went up from the city of David or, Jeru or Jerusalem to her own house that Solomon had built for her. Then he built the miller. The times of the year Solomon used to offer burnt offerings and peace offerings on the altar that he built, built to the Lord, making offerings with it before the Lord, so he finished the house. King Solomon built a fleet of ships at Ezion Geber, which is near Elah, on the shore of the Red Sea, in the land of Edom, or Jordan today. And Hiram sent with the fleets his servants, seamen who were familiar with the sea, together with the servants of Solomon. And they went to Ophir. Ophir, of course, that would be uh, Somalia today. Um, and brought from there a gold of 420 talents, and they were, and they brought it to King Solomon. So these people they traveled all across the Middle East. I mean, all across the Middle East, and they, they've got a, um, they've got a. I mean, they traveled all the way down to, to Somalia. So that's a long way from from Israel. And they have a map here. It says Solomon's international ventures, places places that he visited. 950 B.C. Solomon's firm control of important trade routes, making Egypt, Arabia, which is Saudi Arabia today, Mesopotamia, which is Iraq, and, and, uh, and, and uh, Anatolia, or Asia Minor, which is, of course, Turkey today, provided him with, in, with incalculable wealth. I mean, he was very rich. Parting with King Hiram of Tyre or Lebanon, Solomon also launched his own trading expeditions to Ophir, which is Somalia today, to acquire valuable and exotic goods, the Queen of Sheba, Sheba is of course Yemen, so the Queen of so the Queen of Yemen visits Solomon and attests to his great fame throughout the ancient world. Solomon further augmented his wealth by buying horses from Q, Q is of course Turkey today, and chariots from Egypt and selling them to the kings of Syria and the Hittites. Hittites is also but the Hittites were were settlers who lived on the Turkey Syria border border of the day. Now the map here, this is the places where he had where he uh he had visited, where Sama had visited and uh, he has sent he sent his servants to these countries to get get materials and all this stuff. So these are the countries that he had visited or he had sent his servants to get materials. Tarshish uh, he sent he sent his uh he sent his um his servants to Tarshish, which is Spain today to get silver, ivory, apes, which are, you know, we all know apes like monkeys, and peacocks. Um, he, he sent them also to Q, which is of course Turkey today, to get horses. Of course you had the Hittites, you had Syria, he had, um, he had, uh, he also sent them to Egypt to get chariots, he sent them down to, to Sheba, which is Yemen today, to get gold, spices, and precious stones. And also he sent them down to southwest um, or actually sent them down to uh, all the all way down to uh, Somalia, which is which is Ophir, to get gold, alma wood, and precious stones. So he sent them all across all across the the world pretty much. Again, he sent his servants to to uh, Spain. That's a long that's a long way from Israel, you know, to Spain. But he sent them to Spain by ship, of course. So like I said, he sent he, he sent them to Spain, to Turkey, to to Syria, to Egypt, to all the way down to all the way, all the way down to Somalia, down to, down to Yemen. I mean, all across all across the world, he sent his servants to, to to gather things to bring them back to Israel. Um, 
of course for the Lord's Temple, also for uh, for other for other uses as, as well. And this is the map here. Um, of course, in the green, that's Solomon's kingdom. As of as of right now, in First Kings chapter nine, his kingdom stretched from the Israel Egypt border all the way up into uh, into uh, or close to Turkey. So this is this this is the area that he had um, explored. They sent his servants to to get to get materials for the temple and for other things as well. This is how big this this map is how big uh, or or the places that where he went to. You can see that right there. You see the green. That's the kingdom right there. Let's see, put it back up. See, well, <laughs> if you can see it there, that's the um, that's how big he explored the area. See, you see all the way down to 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 uh, where Somalia is at today, all the way up through Africa or through through Ethiopia to Egypt, all the way over to where where Yemen is today, Saudi Arabia, all up to Syria. All the way up to um, Turkey and all the way over to Spain. So he uh, explored um, most ancient world, world world at that time. So that's, anyway, that's chapter nine about um the Lord the Lord appears to Solomon, Solomon's other acts, and that that's that for uh, chapter nine. Also, and also the, the countries that he explored, he sent servants to gather things for the temple. Uh, also describes that here. I showed you. I just showed you the map, and like I said, he he sent his servants to. Uh, I mean, all the way down to Somalia, to uh, Ethiopia, up to e up to Egypt, over to Yemen, um, Syria, Turkey, and all the way over to Spain. I mean, he sent them all across the world to gather things to bring them back to Israel for the Lord's temple, and also for other uses as well. I'll be right back with chapter ten here here shortly. Thank you.